Which brake on your bike is safer to use? Front or rear? A lot of new riders intuitively tend to use rear brake more than front, because they think it's safer. Why is it so? Let's discuss in this video. We'll talk about braking on a straight line, braking in curve, combined braking, braking with front and rear brake separately, with and without ABS, etc. And most importantly, we'll discuss the most common mistakes with front and rear brake, see how they play out and how to avoid them. This is a pretty important video, especially for a new rider. So, don't forget to put a like and subscribe right now. Let's go! First of all, let's see why the rear brake is widely considered a safer option. First, a lot of people have unpleasant experience on bicycles, when they grab the front brake once and flipped over the handlebars. So now, intuitively, they think the same thing will happen on a motorcycle too. Though it is indeed possible, it is not as easy to do on a motorcycle as on bicycle. On bicycle we have really high center of mass, because bicycle itself is pretty lightweight and we sit on top of it. With motorcycles it's an opposite situation. It's pretty heavy and it is located underneath our body. So on any motorcycle we will have much lower center of mass. On some bikes like cruisers or heavy tourers we can't flip over the handlebars even if we want to, regardless of how much we pull the brake. On lighter and higher bikes we still can do a stoppy if the conditions are right, if we have good clean dry pavement and good sticky tires, but it is really not that easy to do and it doesn't happen as fast as on a bicycle. If you have practiced braking even a little, you'll easily avoid an unintended stopping. So you shouldn't really worry about flipping over the handlebars. It is not very easy to do and you can easily prevent it even if you have minimal training. But there is a second, much more common scenario. When people just grab the front brake on a motorcycle, very often they lose traction on front tire, which results in low side like this. Why this happens? When we brake on a motorcycle, no matter how, with front brake, rear brake or even engine braking, the part of our combined weight transfers to the front wheel. The faster we brake and the higher and shorter our bike is, the more weight transfers to the front wheel. The more weight we have on a tire, the more traction we have on that tire. That's all very nice, but there is a catch. This weight transfer doesn't happen instantly, it takes some time. That means if we just grab the front brake with all our force right away, without waiting for the weight transfer to complete, this way we exceed the maximal braking force which front tire can handle at the given moment. Then front wheel locks up and when it's locked it can no longer stabilize our bike and we end up falling onto our side. Usually, once we lock up the front wheel, we have less than one second to release the brake and stabilize the bike. An average reaction time of a human, when it is not prepared, is about one second too. That's why people say, it happened so fast, my bike just suddenly dropped on its side. Therefore, front brake is perceived as unpredictable and dangerous. These are two main reasons why people think that front brake can be dangerous and tend to use rear brake more. Let's see what happens when we use rear brake though. If we just use the rear brake only, we end up with very poor braking performance. As we discussed earlier, under braking the weight goes to the front wheel. Initially, at the first moment when we start braking, the weight is distributed more or less even between the front and rear wheels. So both the front and rear brake have somewhere around 50% of stopping power. However, as soon as we start braking the weight starts to shift forward. And now the rear brake has less and less stopping power. If we just brake with only the rear brake, it will have only around 30% of stopping power. So our stopping distance will be about 2 to 3 times longer if we use rear brake only, instead of both brakes. So, 
That's the first problem with the rear brake. If we need to stop really fast, we can't possibly do it with rear brake only. Our stopping distance will inevitably be too long. Second problem is that rear brake locks up much easier than the front brake. Again, because the weight transfers to the front, we have less tire traction on rear, which means we can exceed the maximum braking force easier, which results in skidding the rear tire. On a straight line, when our bike is completely upright, it is not a big deal really. Yes, we further increase the braking distance, but at least we don't fall down. But as soon as our bike leans just a bit, it starts to drift. If our bike drifts too much, we have two possible outcomes. We either keep the brake locked and lay the bike down, so we get a low side. Or if we suddenly release the brake, rear tire will violently regain traction and bike will flip to another side, catapulting our body. This is called high side. High side is usually considered more dangerous than low side, because with low side we just deal with abrasive wear, unless we hit something in the process of sliding. So if we have decent gear, we'll probably be ok. With high side we obviously now have to land somehow. And on top of good gear we need some luck as well. So all in all, locking up the rear brake is not only easier than front, it also can possibly end up in a nastier crash as well. Now let's have a look at combined braking technique. It is considered the most effective one, and rightfully so. However, it also has a downside, which is worth mentioning. In combined braking, we use both brakes for braking with maximum effectiveness. The front brake we squeeze gradually more and more, as the front tire loads more and more. And the rear brake we apply and then gradually release as the rear tire unloads. The trick is that there is a lot of stuff going on simultaneously. We have to control the front brake and apply it effectively, but not too much or too fast. And at the same time, we have to deal with rear brake, which is extremely easy to lock up since we are braking fast and almost all weight now is on the front wheel. That's a really hard thing to pull off and it requires a lot of practice. And more important, we have to practice on a regular basis. Luckily, now we have ABS systems on our bikes, which are really a game changer. Now even people who don't practice combined braking much can use it without fear of locking up any brakes. Practicing emergency braking is still important, because we still need to teach our brain on how fast we can brake. Without that, we often can't correctly choose the proper speed on the road. For students who don't have ABS on their bike, I personally recommend to practice combined braking a lot, and until you really master that, you can restrict to using only the front brake. You will still have the most of braking force, like about 80-90% of your total braking effectiveness, but there will be almost no chance for you to high side and you will have much more attention on the front brake, so you will have less chance of low siding as well. Alright, now let's look at corner braking. What's going on there? Basically, all the stuff from braking on a straight line also applies in corners too. We still have weight transfer, so the front brake is still more effective than the rear. Also, now if we lock up the rear wheel, we are guaranteed to go drifting. And if we don't manage to release the rear brake correctly in time, this will end up either in a low side or a high side. And with front brake, we still have to use progressive braking technique, but now we have to be even more slow and careful, since part of our traction already goes to cornering forces. Obviously, the more we lean, the less we can brake. Fortunately, due to friction circle, which we'll conveniently skip, because it's boring even for my channel, we can brake rather hard even when we have decent lean angles. Additional concern about braking in corner is how our bike behaves under braking. When our bike is leaned, the contact patch of the tire is no longer on the center line directly below the bike. It is offset now. When we apply a front brake, because the contact patch is offset, it makes the front wheel turn inside more than necessary, which produces the effect similar to counter steering. As a result, our bike tends to stand up and go wide. 
On the other hand, when we brake, we lose speed, which makes our bike go tighter. Normally, these two processes roughly cancel each other out. Our bike simultaneously slows down and stands up, and our trajectory remains more or less the same. This effect is more pronounced on bigger lean angles. On casual everyday angles, bike really don't tend to stand up that much. But if we try to squeeze the front brake too fast, our bike can indeed stand up and go wider than we want. So the key here is usual. We need to apply front brake in a smooth and controlled way and keep our arms as loose and relaxed as it's possible. This way we can effectively brake mid-corner, despite a lot of people are scared to do that. As front and rear brake goes, again, front brake has much more stopping power and if used incorrectly can lead to the low side. Rear brake has just a fraction of stopping power, it's much easier to lock up and when locked up can either lead to a low side or a high side. Just like with braking on a straight line, ABS system saves us from locking up wheels, which is a massive insurance for braking mid-corner. New bikes with corner and ABS even prevent our bike from standing up, even if we squeeze the front brake too fast. So again, can't recommend anti-lock systems enough for street riding. They really can have our back in case we make a mistake. So let's make a conclusion. Despite the popular opinion that the rear brake is much safer to use than front, that's not really the case. When used incorrectly, both brakes can lead to a crash. Rear brake can even be more dangerous, because often it can lead to a high side. More so, rear brake doesn't really have much stopping power, so we just have to master the front brake if we want to be able to stop fast. Ideally, we should be able to use combined braking effectively. Yes, it can be a bit tricky and requires a lot of practice, but really it always pays off sooner or later. In this regard, an ABS system can be massive help. It doesn't spare us from training completely, but it massively reduces the cost of our mistakes, which is pretty nice. If you like this video, please put a like and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye!